Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special presentation on bonus rooms and one and a half story construction in Envisioneer. Today, we're going to start a project right from scratch, show you how to build that bonus room above in that one and a half story area. And following the presentation, we are recording, and we will send you out a recording of the presentation so that you can watch it again and pick up some tips from it. So let's get started and look at the construction. I'm going to hit File and New, and we are going to construct this right from scratch. And when I'm here, I'm going to grab the Slab on Grade template. And with this template, when we load this up, I'm going to go right up and look at the building locations information so we can understand what's going on in the background. So I'm going to come up here to Settings and go to Building Locations. Here in the Building Locations dialog box, we get all the information about the height of the walls and where they're situated in relation to each other and to grade. So right now with the ground floor highlighted, we can see that the floor level is four inches off of grade. So we're sitting on a four inch poured slab. And then our wall height is eight feet, one and an eighth, and we have a ceiling height of eight feet. I'm gonna go ahead and change this wall height on our ground floor to nine feet. What we'll be building today is a garage with a bonus room above. So I want my garage to have a nine foot ceiling height. So I change the wall height to nine feet and it instantly comes up with this dialog box letting it me know that, hey, you've changed the wall height. That means any story sitting above it may need to be potentially changed. Do you want me to go ahead and change this for you automatically? And I'm gonna click yes. And that automatically changes our second floor height. I'm going to change this ceiling height to be nine feet as well. That doesn't change and that dialog box won't pop up. That dialog box just pops up if you change the floor level or the wall height because those are going to affect other stories above or below. So with that change made, just changing it to a nine foot ceiling and a nine foot wall height, I'm simply going to click OK. Once I click OK, I'm back to my drawing screen and I can start to draw the project. So I'm going to be drawing a garage unit. So I'm going to come over to my catalog panel and I'll just use 2x6 cement board siding. Move my cursor out onto the drawing screen and I left click once to get started. As I move my cursor, it's going to tell me how long that wall is, center line to center line. So I'm going to say 25 feet wide. And then I pull my cursor up and say that we're 30 feet deep and then pull across and say it again, 25 feet, and then bring myself down to my start point and click. So there's the outline and the basis of our ground floor walls. Once I have those ground floor walls drawn, um, I can start to establish other things by putting the roof on the structure. So I'm gonna go over and grab my roof tool and I'm going to put a 12-12 roof on. I want a nice steep pitch so that I can have an ample amount of space in that bonus room above. I move my cursor inside the structure that we've built on our ground floor so far, and I left click. And there's our roof. I'm going to want it to be gable front to back. So I'm going to click on the overhang of the garage, and you can see that the arrows appear showing me each individual surface that makes up this roof. I'm going to pick the two surfaces that I want to change by clicking on the arrow and changing them to green. The green arrow indicates that they're selected and ready to be picked and changed. So I'm going to right click and look at the properties of those two sides of the roof. In the roof dialog box, I can make any changes that I want to this roof. We can see that it's a 12 and 12 pitch and we can see that the roof shape currently is set to hip. So I'm going to click on the button beside hip to reveal all of the different roof shapes that I can choose for my garage structure. And I'm going to choose gable. And then all I have to do is click OK. And now I have a 12-12 gable roof over top of my structure. And they're sitting right on the wall of my ground floor. So right now they're sitting right at nine feet. I'm gonna put this and I'm gonna to start to create a section through our unit here. So I'll just pick here and look down. So I can start to look through the building itself. 
and I'll just zoom out here a little bit. So here we can see our 2x6 cement board siding walls. We can see the 1212 roof sitting on top of that. What we're going to start to build into this are the floor for the second floor um, unit and put in some garage doors and a window up above and a ceiling and go through there. When we start to build the floor above, I may want to move the roof up, depending on how I want the structure to sit. So with the floor itself, we're going to be putting 2 by 10 floor construction in here. And if I want to move that roof up, so it's sitting on that platform of the floor, I can do that or I can leave it sitting right now down on the walls. Let's put it back down into 2D and we'll start that construction. So I'm going to select, first of all, one of the walls that are down on my ground floor location. With it selected, I'm going to right-click, and right-clicking reveals all the choices that I can do to that wall. And what I first of all want to do is select all similar walls. So I'm going to select all similar. And then all of the walls that make up my garage are now selected because they're all 2x6 cement board siding. With all of them selected, I right-click again to reveal what I can do to all four walls. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate them to a location. I'm going to duplicate them up to my second floor and click OK. It's going to come up and ask me, do I want to delete the original walls, the walls that were on my ground floor? And I'm going to say no. But if you've ever drawn anything on the incorrect location, you could click yes here. It would delete them from my ground floor and just copy them up to my second floor. So do I want to delete them right now? No, I don't. I want them to remain on my ground floor. But I do want to go up and see them on my second floor. So down in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, I'm changing my location to the second floor. Now I can see those second floor walls. All I'm really going to use them for is the basis of creating my floor instantly and for putting in the knee walls that I want on my second floor. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to erase these walls. So right now, they're just really a placeholder showing me the outline of the walls that are down on my ground floor. I'm going to use those because I can create a structural floor by room. And it's going to look at those four outside walls and allow me to build the floor right inside. The Structural Floor Tool is available in Building Essentials and Construction Suite. If you have Pro Architect, right now you would use the Floor Tool and use Floor by Perimeter, and that will give you your surface, your finished surface in that room. But I'll use the Structural Floor by Room Tool. That'll um, show my catalog panel of all the different structural floors that I have available. And I'm going to select the 2 by 10 floor system with 3 quarter inch OSB sheathing. Move my cursor inside that room. That room will highlight showing me where that floor is going to be laid. And I just left click. And that puts in my structural floor. I right click to tell it that I'm finished putting in structural floors. So just by using the placeholder of those crown floor walls that I copied up, I can very quickly put in a floor in my second floor on that bonus room area. I'm going to use these walls again because I want to put in some knee walls. And I want a five foot tall knee wall in my um, bonus room. And this area outside of that is just going to be our attic space. So if I look back right now in our section view, I can see this area of the roof and my walls going up here. And these are those ground floor walls that I copied up. I basically want to move them over five feet so they're sitting inside my bonus room and marking off a five-foot wall, a little knee wall, and on the other side is going to be my attic space. So let's put that back down in 2D and do just that. So again, I'm going to grab my wall tool, and I'm going to go down into my interior walls and grab a 2x6 interior wall. I'm going to right click and say insert, enter insertion offset. I'm going to offset this over 5 feet. Because this is a 12-12 pitch, 
by going over five feet, I know that the wall is going to be five feet tall when it hits that roof. So I'm going to say five feet and click OK. Move my cursor along this bottom wall, and it will instantly find that wall and show me how to be exactly five feet from that corner. I simply left click and drag it all the way up. I'm going to repeat that process. Right click, enter insertion offset. There's my five foot distance. Click OK to accept it. Move my cursor along this base wall until I see that five foot dimension. I left click to accept it and move my cursor all the way up. I right click and I tell it I'm finished. At this point, I am through with using the exterior cement board siding walls on my second floor. I no longer need them. I really just had them to quickly put in the floor and as an offset to put in these knee walls. So I'm going to select one of those walls by left clicking on it, right click, and again choose that select all similar. It will select every single wall that's a 2 by 6 cement board siding wall on my second floor. So I'll say select all similar. All four are selected. I right click again and I'm going to choose delete. And when I choose delete, this will remove them from my model and they'll no longer be there. Delete. So now all I have up on my second floor, my bonus room, is the floor deck and these walls. Now when I drew these walls, these two 2x6 two interior walls, they're going to follow the rules that are on my second floor location. So under Settings, Building Locations, when I go to draw a wall, it's automatically going to draw it as an 8-foot wall because in my building locations information, it tells me that. The wall height is automatically going to be set to 8 foot 1 and an 8. So when I drew those two walls, they came in at 8 foot 1 and an 8. So I'm going to select one of them. And then holding down my shift key, I'm going to select the other one. Holding down your shift key is an alternate way of selecting multiple items. So with both of those selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to look at their properties. Under the top and bottom tab, this is where we deal with the height of a wall. And you can see they automatically got that 8 foot 1 and an 8 height. So I'm going to backspace that out and make them 5 foot tall walls and click OK. So now if we look back to that section that we cut, we can see um, the walls, and maybe what I'll do is I will bring this a little bit closer here so we can see inside that wall a little bit better here. We'll just drag this up, and we'll see the platform, and now we can see the walls going through, and we can see those walls here. This ground floor wall that we have is just simply hiding um, that wall behind us right now. See our platform? See how it's sitting on top of our walls, but it's cutting into our roof? This is where I mentioned before that you might want to change where that roof is sitting. So I'm going to go back down to my ground floor, select the overhang of the roof, select the one side where it's getting its plate height, not the gable ends, but the opposite sides, and select the other side as well. Both of these two sides right now are saying that they're a 12-12 hip and that their plate height is at 9 foot 1 and an 8. So I'm going to right click and look at their properties because we want to change that. We want to retain that they're a 12, 12, but we want to change their support and details so that instead of being 9 foot 1 and an 8, we're going to change that to 10 feet and click OK. So if we go to the section, we can see it's sitting up on the the roof here is sitting right up on the same height as our platform. So that allows us to have that space. I'm going to give one big tip what I use a lot when I'm drawing, um, especially when I'm in a one and a half story and I'm, I'm worried about heights and where everything is situated. What is the full height here? Where does the eight foot height hit? Where can I put in extra space with these things? I'm going to put this down into 2D. If you want to start taking heights in a section view or an elevation view, 
come up to the Tools pull-down menu, and under there you'll see Layout. And under Layout, you'll see the option to Insert a View. So I'm going to insert a view. This will insert any type of view right here on my working, in my working model view space. So I'm going to go to this section view that we've created. And in that section view, um, I'm going to keep it at a quarter inch equals a foot so that I'll be able to measure and put in dimensions. But I'm going to send, send it into our model space as a drawing, not an image. Sending it in as a drawing allow me to snap to endpoints and midpoints still. If I sent it in as an image, think of that as a photograph. So I can't um, snap to any part of the photograph. It's made up of little pixels on the screen. But if I send it in as a drawing, it recognizes those are lines and allows me to snap to them. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit by clicking on the Zoom Out button. I see everything that I want to see, and I simply click Insert. And I'm just going to insert that off to one side. So there we can see the knee walls sitting on top of the floor and my roof structure above. And I'm going to start to take some measurements. So this is where I can do some dimensions. So I can go up to Tools, Dimensions, Linear Dimensions. Here I can click on this floor surface. Left click, and I'm going to type 8 feet. And that will show me where I'm going to be sitting at that 8 foot mark. So I can see that I've got a lot of space in here, and it's hitting 8 feet right at this point right here. So just a couple feet over from where I have my um, knee walls constructed. So that will give me some great space up in this area. If I go into the camera view, so I'm going to insert a camera view right up inside our space as well, I'll be able to see that space. So we can see I'm on my ground floor now, and I'm just going to pan up. There's our floor, and here's our bonus area above. Now in this bonus area, right now I have the roof and our knee walls. I'm going to need a ceiling, finished ceiling surface in here, and I'm going to want to put a window up here as well. I'm going to want to put some garage doors down below here as well. So let's start working on that in our bonus room above that garage. So I'm just going to put this back into a 2D view. Since I'm on our ground floor location, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is put in my garage doors. So I'm going to click on the garage doors a folder once I've selected on doors. I'm going to choose that 8 foot by 7 foot garage door, move my cursor onto the drawing screen, right click, and choose enter insertion offset. I want them to be a set distance away from the outside corner. I'm going to type 2 feet and click OK. Now as I place my cursor along that wall, it'll show me exactly how to be two feet away from that corner. I left click to insert one. I move my cursor over, and again I'll see that two foot offset, and I left click again. Now, I'm going to put this into a 3D perspective view. There's our garage so far. We can see the garage doors. We can see that bonus area above. And we can see that this wall is balloon framed all the way up to the second floor. With it being balloon framed like that and being a single wall, if I go to put a window in, I'm going to be putting it in on this wall and raising it up to the right and correct height. So how do we do that? Let's put it back into 2D and I'll show you. I'm going to pick on our window tool. And then over in our catalog panel over here to the right, I can select whatever type of window that I want to install. So I'll just grab a window from the catalog. And as I go to put it into this space, remember that it's always following the rules of our building locations information. So if I go to insert this window right now, looking at settings and building locations, the head height of that window is going to be 6 foot 8 off of my ground floor. I want it to sit up into our second floor area, so I'm going to need to raise that up to 17 feet. So I'm going to hit Cancel here, and as I grab that window, I'm going to draw your eyes to the bottom of the screen where we see head height. 
this little box allows you to change the head height on the fly for a single window or door insertion. So for this one window, I want to change it to be sitting way up taller at 17 feet. So I'm going to backspace out the 6 foot 8 and type 17 feet because I want this one window to sit up much taller. Once I type this 17 foot value in, I hit the tab key on my keyboard. The tab key on the keyboard sets that value for you. So now it knows when I'm inserting this window to put it up at 17 feet. I move my cursor out onto the drawing screen and I can visually look to see if I can get the center of that um, wall or I can right click and say center on wall and it will automatically center it on that wall for me 17 feet in the air. I'm going to right click and tell it I'm finished. So if we look back out in our 3D view, we can now see that window sitting up there in our bonus area and our garage door sitting below. If we look inside on that camera view that we inserted, there we can see our window nicely lighting up the bonus area as well. And if we look at our section view, I'm not sure if I cut it deep enough to look at that window. Yes, I did. Um, we'll be able to see that window sitting up there above as well. So all good visuals so you understand that space that you're designing. I'm going to put it back into a 2D view. And I'm going to go up to my second floor area. This is where we've put the platform floor for our bonus room. And this is where we built the knee walls and we have that window in that space. Now I want to insert a ceiling inside that area. So I'm going to go up to my ceiling tool and choose ceiling by picking points. Right now I don't have a room because I don't have the walls on the same location. The walls here on the outside edge are on my ground floor and balloon framed up. So it's not forming an entire room. It's not enclosed. So I have to do a ceiling by picking points. Then I'll go over to my catalog panel, select the ceiling that I want to use, and I'm just going to zoom in so I can get these points correct. I'm just going to select the outside edge here of that wall, so it's the inside face of my room. Left click, left click. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm outlining the corners of that ceiling. So I'm going to pick the four corners of those walls. I left click again, and then I come to my final selection, this last corner. I left click again, and then I right click and choose finish. Don't go back up and choose your original start point. It automatically closes it off for you. You just have to pick the four corners of that room. So I'll choose finish. And you can lightly see, and I'll zoom in so you can maybe see that a little bit better, that red dashed line is the outline of our ceiling. So I'm going to select it so we can see it in green and see the grip points on each side. Those grip points will allow me, if I needed to stretch it smaller or stretch it longer, they allow me to pick it up at those points and move it if I wanted to. I don't need to move it, but I do want to change the type of ceiling because right now this is a flat ceiling. So if I go back into our views, our internal view, we can see that flat ceiling just kind of sitting there. I want to slope it down so it meets our knee wall. And I want to bring it down so it's right at that knee wall height. So the first thing I'm going to do is select that ceiling, right click, and choose elevate because I want to elevate it down to sit on top of those knee walls at five feet and click OK. So now it's sitting down at our knee wall height, but I need it to cathedral up to go to that same 12-12 pitch that we have on our roof. I'm going to put this back down into a 2D view and again select our ceiling. With the ceiling selected, now sitting down at 5 feet, I'm going to right click and look at its properties. So right now our ceiling is just a flat ceiling, but I want to make it a cathedral ceiling so it slopes up at the same slope as our um, roof structure above. So I'll just change it to Cathedral and simply click OK. When it puts it in as a cathedral, you'll notice that it also has the four arrows. Each side of that ceiling 
can potentially have different settings. One side could be maybe a 6 and 12 slope. One alternate side could be a 12, 12 slope. One side could be a gable portion, and the other side could be um, just right up and flat. So because we have all of these arrows, we can really customize and play with this roof and get a shape that we need. So with this one side selected, I'm going to select the opposite side. Clicking on its arrow selects that side of the ceiling as well. With both of those selected, I right click and look at their properties. It's in here that I want to change their shape. I want to change them to be gable ends. You know, they automatically empty out and they become gabled. It also has a skirt. See that skirt running around there? I want to get rid of that. So right now the skirt width says one foot. So it's going to come in one foot with a flat ceiling and then gable up. But I want to remove that, so I'm going to change that to a zero width. So it just gables up automatically right from the edge. And then all I have to do is click OK. So now we have gable to gable right from edge to edge. I'm going to select these two sides and deselect the original two sides that we selected. With those two sides selected, I'm now going to right click and look at the properties of those two sides. These two sides are going to hold the information about what pitch is that ceiling. What degrees is it? Right now it's 45 degrees. We could change that to slope in 12 or a percentage. So depending on how you want to indicate that slope of that ceiling, you can do it either by degrees, percentage, or um, rise in 12. So my rise in 12 is 12, 12, or a 45 degree slope. I also don't want it to have a skirt edge along this side. See how it's got the skirt of one foot and then up to our 12, 12? So I'm going to change that to zero. So we've got a 12, 12 slope going up to right from the edge, and on the Outside edges there, we've got our gable end. So that's the shape of our ceiling. And I simply click OK. Now if we look inside in our camera that we placed in our bonus room, we have the ceiling sitting above and our bonus gable walls um, on the ends. And we also have our knee walls at 5 feet. So we made sure that the ceiling sat down at 5 feet and then we put the gables in and made sure that the slope of that ceiling was 12-12, or it could be any slope that you want it to be by changing the values in the properties of that ceiling. You'll notice that our end wall does not have trim. Remember that this wall is balloon framed up. So right now, the base of that wall, as you can see outlined in green, is sitting right down at our garage doors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trim that's associated to this wall and I'm going to move it up so that it's sitting um, up in our bonus room area, not sitting down below where we have um, this um, garage below. I don't want the trim down there, so I'm going to be moving it up. So I'm going to right click and look at the properties of that wall. And I'm going to go to the trim tab. The trim of this wall, you'll see that there's a left side and a right side. How you indicate where it is a left or a right is you pretend that you're standing on the green dot looking towards the red dot, and you'll have your left inside face and your right outside face. So it's the left face that I want to change for our trim. It's that baseboard right here. I want to lift that baseboard up. So it's sitting at 9 foot 11, sitting right up inside our bonus room area. If I wanted to alternatively have trim below and trim above, there's other trim options in there that I can take advantage of. So with the trim, I could have that being my chair rail and have it sitting up at that correct height as well, that 9 foot 11, and just giving it the same properties as the baseboards that that MDF um, S4S baseboard. So if you did have trim and trim, no problem. I just knew I didn't want trim below, so I just moved it above. You could take advantage of even that chair rail to bring that up as well. 
So now we have our bonus room. We can see the entire bonus room. We can do a walk around in here. But what we don't have is any way to get up there. So I'm going to build stairs up into our bonus room and then cut a hole in the floor to allow us up into that second floor and build another little knee wall as a railing along that edge of the stairs. So to build our stairs, we always build them on the lowest level. So I'm going to move myself down to the ground floor location. And I'm going to grab my stair tool and just move it out here outside the building to begin with and just left click to insert a straight stair. I'm going to double click on that stair to bring up its properties. Now we know that the overall height going from one floor to the next was our nine foot, but then we had the um, extra value of that floor being put on top of that. So we're going to change that overall height to 10 feet so that we can get up to our second floor. Total number of stairs you can see automatically changed to 16. That value, that number of stairs, is going to be based on our riser maximum. So whatever the maximum rise you're going to allow, and that should be according to your local building codes, it will take that and the overall height and divide that out so that you have a total number of stairs. And it's going to do that in an equal um, distance, an equal rise. So our actual rise is seven and a half inches. So make sure, according to your local building code, that this riser maximum is set so that it can use that for the total number of steps. All I have to do then is click OK, and there's my stairs. I'm going to rotate them just by putting my cursor along this um, triangle. That indicates that I'm ready to rotate these stairs. So just holding down my left mouse button, I can drag them to the new position that I want them. Now that I have the stairs in the orientation that I want them, I want to show them where I, I want them to go. We've got this five foot wall here. I'm going to move the stairs into the building and I can place them right along that five foot long wall that we have in our second floor. And I'm going to push them right up against the wall. And then I just release. So now I have them in the position that I want them. So I can come into the garage, have a little five foot area here, and then walk up the stairs to my bonus area. I'm going to move my location to the second floor. We already have a floor inserted here on our second floor. So what I have to do is I have to cut a hole in it around that stair. So I'm going to zoom in on that area right here, and I can see my stair, the outline of it. What I have to do is select that floor system. So I left click on the edge of that floor and made sure that I had the entire 2 by 10 floor system selected. You know you have the whole system when you see those red arrows. The the floor itself is comprised of individual members. So I've got my 2 by 10 floor joist. If I move my cursor to the edge, you can see that I also have my rim joist there. If I keep moving it over, you can see that I've got a 3 quarter inch OSB. All separate elements, but they're comprised in the entire um, 2 by 10 floor system. So if I check the whole system and I cut a hole in it, it's going to cut through that subfloor. It's going to cut the floor joist if I need it to, and also the band or rim joist if I need to as well. So I want to make sure I have that entire floor system selected. For those of you using ProArchitect, it's simply cutting a hole in the floor. You don't have to worry about the separate framing elements. It doesn't have those. So with that floor selected, I right-click. And this process would be the same if you're using the Simpler Floor tool right-clicking and choosing Cut Opening. Both of those tools have the Cut Opening tool. And then all I have to do is show it the corners of the hole I want to cut. So I'm going to put my cursor on the edge of that stair. As I get my cursor close to the edge of that stair, notice how my cursor changes. It changes to a circle with an X meaning it's going to snap to the corner of that stair. It found it for me. So I simply left click. 
and then I move my cursor to the edge of the stair, the other edge, left click, and then I'm moving it to the edge of the floor and the stair, I left click again, and I come across right to the edge again, and I'm going to use the snap track tool. That tool, if I hover my cursor over my original start point, I'm not left clicking, I'm just hovering there, it'll show me how to be perfectly in line. See that imaginary line that gets drawn there? That little snap line shows me that I'm perfectly in line with that very first point. All I have to do is left click to select it. Once you're done outlining the hole, you simply right click and choose finish. And it automatically cuts a hole in that area for you. So my floor was automatically cut. You can see that my floor joist stopped there. What I need to do now, though, is all of a sudden there's a hole in the floor. I want to draw another knee wall right in this area right here to prevent people from falling down that hole. We'll use it as a basis of like a railing. You could also use the railing tool alternatively as well. I'm going to use a knee wall. So I'm going to grab our 2x6 interior wall, move it onto this wall right here, left click, and show it where I want it to draw. And I'm going to extend out. Um, to where this other wall would maybe hit, but I'll hit it right a little bit closer here to right to our edge. I right click and I tell it that I'm finished. Now if I go back up to our bonus room and I walk out and around, I can see we've got that wall drawn. Now remember it's following our rules of our location, so it's going to go in as an 8-foot wall. I'm going to select it, right-click, and look at its properties. And under the properties of that wall, I'm going to go to the top and bottom tab and simply change that to a 4-foot tall wall. I'm going to let it sit a little bit lower. So then if we come over here to the edge, and I'm just going to pan us up a little bit so we can see the top of this wall, and we walk a little further and look down, we can see our hole in the floor and our stairs going down in that area. Okay, so we can build the bonus room with our stair, cutting the floor, putting in our knee walls, putting in our ceiling, allows us to create that entire bonus room area. So that when you're drawing out a garage, you can quickly draw that bonus room above now. It's a great way to take advantage of that extra space. And you can see we drew that in about 38 minutes, and that was with instruction. So once you get really good at drawing the garages and the bonus rooms, you could have that garage and bonus room done in 20 minutes. And because we have the automatic dimensioning tools and we have the elevation section tools, you could have your working drawings done for that bonus room area done in no time. What I'd like to do now is just to recap everything we did. So if you did come in a little bit late, you can understand everything we did to draw out this bonus room, and then I'll answer any questions that you might have as well. So we started off today's project just by hitting File and New. And under New, I chose that we wanted to create just a, a model that had a um, slab on grade situation. So under our building locations, you can see that the ground floor was only four inches off of grade. It's sitting on a slab. And I looked at the wall height, and I knew that I wanted my garage to have a higher ceiling. So I changed the wall height in my garage to nine foot one and an eighth. When I changed that height, it automatically changed the floor level in my second floor to be 10 foot three and an eighth it automatically adjusted it up. And I also changed my ceiling height to be 9 feet. With all of that done, then I cho chose my wall tool, and I drew the outline of the wall 25 feet by 30 feet, center line to center line for this garage. Once I had those walls in place, I put the roof on. And the roof that we chose was a 12-12 roof. So we've got a nice deep pitch so that we have a nice amount of room, headroom, up in our bonus room above. Once I had the roof on, it came in as a hip roof. 
we selected the roof and changed the two ends to be gables. And we um, also changed the plate height of the sides here to be 10, 10 feet, so that they're sitting up above on top of this um, floor deck system that we have. So we've got a little bit more space for all of that framing that has to happen. We then copied these ground floor walls up to our second floor. We wanted them there simply as a placeholder. So we had an outline of where those walls were on our ground floor. With those walls there, we then took advantage of our structural, structural floor by room tool because it could find that outline and automatically draw the structural floor right to that same outline for us. Um, also with that there, it gave us the ability to draw in these knee walls. These knee walls we wanted to be exactly over five feet from the corner because I wanted them to be five foot tall and hit that wall. And because it's a 12-12 roof, if I come over five feet, it would go up five feet when it, when it hit. So we had those walls in. We changed their height under their properties to be five foot tall walls as well. And that was under that top and bottom tab. With that in place, we then skirted back down to the ground floor and started inserting our openings. So we wanted to put in those garage doors and this window. And the big tip of that window is remember that this is one balloon framed wall up that we chose. Because the wall is this particular wall right here under its property is set to automatically extend. That means it's automatically going to extend up to whatever plate height and shape I put my roof above. So it automatically grew up to the pitch of that roof so that we have that extra tall wall. So when we're putting this window in, we remember that we want it to go sitting up way up tall. So when we select our window tool, and we have the one that we want, always remember that base height. That base height means what is the head height here of your window. I wanted it to be at 17 feet. So I typed in 17 feet, hit tab, and when it puts that window in, I know it's automatically going to be at 17 feet above. So if we look out in the back here, we have that window sitting nice and tall up at five, uh, 17 feet from the ground and this one as well, looking into our bonus room area. Put this back down into 2D. Then we went back up into our second floor and we drew the ceiling. And the ceiling itself, we used the ceiling by picking points because we had eliminated the exterior walls at this point and we didn't have an entire room. These interior walls feed out to the exterior walls that are on our ground floor. So by picking points, we picked the four corners of this room where we wanted that ceiling, and then we looked at the properties of that ceiling and changed the two end ones to be gables, and these two sides to make sure that they were a 12-12 slope as a cathedral with a zero skirt and that created the ceiling. From there, we inserted our stairs on our ground floor location. And then up at our second floor location, we cut the hole in that floor to allow those stairs to come up and feed up. And then we put in our little pony wall here that acts as a railing for those stairs. And from that, we created our bonus room above the garage. I'm going to answer your questions right now. We have a couple minutes to do that. So if you do have any questions or want me to clarify anything that I did today, make sure that you type in your questions and I'll be able to answer those live during our um, class today. Um, I'm going to go up and see if we have any questions at this point. On the second floor walls in the garage, couldn't you use the room division to close the room so that you can use the ceiling by room instead of using ceiling by picking points? I'm going to be honest. I am not a fan of the room division tool. The room division tool um, 
was created so that you could divide a room up and have different finishes in it. So I could put an imaginary division line in, and one part of the room could have flooring that is um, tile, and another part of that room could have flooring that is hardwood flooring. I much prefer to use the tools that are there instead of that division tool. I'm putting in a ceiling, and I'm going to pick the points to show where it's going. The ceiling division tool, I would have to divide that room up um, twice on either, on either side of it. So I would have to do just as many point picks, um, four points with the room division tool, and four points putting my ceiling in. Um, I prefer putting in the, the floor by perimeter, floor by picking points, floor by ceiling by picking points, or ceiling by um, picking points, or by room. I find the room division tool because you've got these imaginary lines that you might forget about. They can get a little messy. So I, I honestly never use room division. I put the ceiling and the floors in by picking points or by, but if you're, if you're comfortable by using the division tool, you can certainly do that. Why does it appear that the five foot knee walls are not tied into the ceiling? Um, you can see the ceiling coming down there. I've got them put on the edge there. Um, so I think they're, they're tying into that ceiling pretty well because the ceiling's coming down and sitting at five foot and these are sitting at five foot. So I think, I think they're sitting in there pretty, pretty good. If you had used structural floor by perimeter tool, would the floor joist then sit fully on the ground floor top plate? It looks like in section that the, like the structural floor only sits halfway on the ground floor top plate. I did use the floor by um, room tool. And when you're using the room tool, it's going to go to the inside of the room. If I went to the perimeter, um, it could have went to the outside face. So I'm going to go back to our section tool just to show everyone what we're meaning here. So in the room tool, see how it's coming to the inside face? I did this um, ceiling by room or floor by room. If you use the perimeter, I could go to the outside face. This can all be stretched out too, so if I wanted to sit it to the outside face, I can move that out as well. If you wanted to have an eight foot ceiling in the center, would you just use the tray ceiling and do it that way? Um, if I wanted to have the ceiling slope up and then come over flat and then slope back down. There's a couple different ways you can do that. So I'm going to select my ceiling here. What I could do is simply put in a flat ceiling at eight feet as well. So I've got this slope coming up here. What I also could do is do ceiling by picking points and then just show it where I want that ceiling to go at eight feet. So I'm just going to left click very quickly here to get this in. Ceiling here, ceiling here, and here. Right click finish. And if I go into our camera view, you can see I've got that eight foot ceiling in there. This ceiling right here then, what I could do with that then is um, pick the points to um, cut that opening. So I could use the cut opening tool on that ceiling. So I'm gonna edit, select previous, this ceiling right here. Um, you could use the cut opening tool if you didn't want it to have that full. And I'm just going to cut a simple hole here, finish, and camera one. So we'd have to adjust that to the right height. Where would I get that right height? Where do I know those two are going to be correct? And undo here. That's where I'd want you to take advantage on our ground floor and insert that view so you can measure off where does that eight foot ceiling hit? You would measure a distance here. So tools, um, dimensions, linear dimension. So I'll go from that corner. I'm just going to loosely pick. You would zoom in and make sure you pick it correctly. Left click from this corner to the corner of the wall so that I can get that height. Um, just trying to pick up here. I'm going to hit to finish here. Tools, dimensions, um, linear dimension. If I pick from here, 
and then I pick to that point right there, then I would have, I'd, I know I'd have to go over um, six foot or to this point, sorry, this point right here, I'll just grab that, bring that back over to that point right there. That would be the distance that I'd have to cut that hole on the one side. So this is where that section view where you can dimension would really be strategic. So I can move that over to where that line is and then pick that up. So make sure you're picking a little bit closer than I did. Zoom in. Make sure you have those endpoints there. And that looks like it's all of the questions that you have. Excellent questions. Um, really went into some level detail there with your questions. What if you wanted to go to a flat ceiling? How do you do all of the different points here um, to create that, that bonus room above to the specifications that you want them to be? Again, I did record today's class, and I will be putting it up onto YouTube so that you can um, watch the video again and pick up on some tips that you might have if you want to see anything clarified. We will be sending you out a link to today's video. So thank you everyone for joining me for today's class on bonus rooms. I hope you learned a little bit and I hope you can use that in your bonus room construction as well. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.